Hi, 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 my lovely viewers. Welcome to this edition of Society 360. Today, we are going to focus on using smaller spaces for valuable things. You do not have any excuse. With technology and everything around, you don't have any excuse if you say that you do not have space to grow something small or start rearing animals in your house. This is a typical example of using smaller spaces in your area or in your house, in your home, to grow something or to rear something. This is a catfish pond found on a rooftop. So this young man here, known as Elisha, a 21-year-old SHS graduate of the Laboni Senior High School, Elisha is doing this together with his uncle in a small space found on a rooftop. So he's going to tell us how they even nursed the idea to uh, start catfish farming in this small space. And the good thing is that everything they use here is made in Ghana. So Elisha, you're welcome to Society 360. Thank you. How did you even nurse the idea of starting this catfish farming using this small space on a rooftop? So the idea came after SHS. Okay. When I was in the house doing nothing. Mm. So I first came up with the idea that I wanted to go into farming. Mm. That's into snow farming and catfish farming. Okay. But I had no financial support. Mm. So one day my uncle saw, I drew a chart. So my uncle saw the chart and he also thought about the plan. Okay. So later from there, he also decided that he also go into farming. So he asked me what farming can he start with or can we start with? Okay. And I asked, no, I told him that we can start with catfish. Mm. And he asked me why. And I said, the top here, when you do catfish farming here, it will be easy because one, when you do the catfish farming here, because this side is close to the roadside, mm. it will be easy for you to get people to buy. Because when they are matured, and when you just put a banner or let's say a signboard at the roadside, people will know that, yes, it's from this side. Okay. It's from the area. Mm. They know you and they are with you in the area. So okay. it will be easy for them to patronize you. Mm. So he said, okay, let's go to into the catfish farm. So from there, and we started. We started. So when you started, how many pieces did you start with? Are you able to tell us the number of fingerlings we started with? And how okay. long have you been doing this? So we started with juveniles. Okay. We started with 500 juveniles. Mm. That's what we started. With. And that's, that's how long ago? That's, we started in March. That's 20 feet much. Mm. So, so currently, what's the population? So currently, we are about 462. We are about 462. We have 400. sold some already? No. There were mortalities. Okay. There were mortalities along the line. Mm. So the mortalities were about, uh, was as a result of cannibalism. Hey, this scientific term, are you able to break it down for us? Is <laughs> Uh, when, when they are growing up, mm. the bigger ones, uh, how, how do I say it? They want to feed on the They want to ones. feed on the smaller ones. Ah. And when they are feeding on them, they don't take any parts than the tail. Okay. When they take the tail parts, they become stagnant. They become very weak because it's the tail that helps them to move ah, okay. in the water. Wow. So some time ago, around March, the was it the the next month, the very next month, mm. there were a lot of mortalities. Okay, there were a lot of mortalities. Mm. So, what did you learn from that kind of mortality? What did you learn from it, and what uh, that thing that you learned from it? How did it help you to make sure that they do not happen again? So, from the mortality. We went ahead to search on the internet mm. about the mortality and how to solve it. Mm. And we found out about, uh, about the leaves that can cure them. Okay. So we tried bitter leaf. Mm. That's a normal one that you can use. Okay. Bitter leaf. Mm. So we tried bitter leaf 
and for some months the mortality rates went down okay went down so now you talk to me about the equipment here the structure here did you get get them here in accra here in ghana or were they imported or how did you get them so for the tarpaulins and the metals and the tanks and all the pvc pipe they were all made in ghana okay or let's say we bought them right here in ghana okay we bought a tarpaulin from achimota mm -hmm. there is a guy at achimota who is into tarpaulin production so if you give him the size you want and you manufacture it for you and you fix it yourself okay so you told him that you wanted to use it for fish pond yes and then he did everything for you like yes. this wow so what about the water i i think the water look brown yeah is it rain water or what, what why, why is it looking brown like that no you see when you are into catfish or any fish farming mm. some people use borehole water okay but we because we are at the top and because we are trying to manage the expenses mm. we didn't we didn't try to dig another borehole okay we use the pipe water straight mm. but we don't give them the pipe water direct okay we leave the pipe water there for about three to four days for the chlorine in the water to evaporate mm. so when it's out that one is good for them to live in it okay and the only way for you to know that the water it's good for them to swim inside when it gets to three days when you check in the water you see mosquitoes they've laid their eggs on it so you see them swimming in it the small small ones swimming in it when you see that that should let you know that it's good for the fish okay so you said you started this about in march yeah in so march. that's like we are in, in the fifth month since mm -hmm. you started yeah. so when will it be due for harvesting let's say next month next month will be okay okay but normally the market demands for one kg and above mm. but we we don't want it to get to one kg that's so, a single one yeah just okay. a single one is sold at the markets one kg mm. there is no one kg most people don't want it right. that's the fresh one okay. the fresh one is sold at one kg but if you want to smoke it that's four months you want to smoke catfish and sell it that's around four months you need to start harvesting you need to start harvesting it okay um so are you are you looking to expand this business i know you started on a small scale using this space instead of the space going waste you decided to get this valuable thing from it by starting a catfish farm on a rooftop how is the future looking like for this business okay so because we just started and we are new into the business mm -hmm. as time goes on we'll be expanding it to the other side or probably moving to a different location okay so your, your target market what's your target market is it that you said that the those who want it smoked usually harvest is from uh, the Four fourth months. month yes or the fresh one what's the one one kg for from six months. months so what's your target market is it a, those who buy it fresh or is a mix of the two how what, what's your target market you see for now because we are new into the market mm. We don't really have a target market okay but what we do is we have some people there are some ladies that move in the area that sell smoked fish mm. saturday morning okay so they are the ones that we are targeting at the moment mm -hmm. for the smoked ones but for the fresh ones we are targeting the restaurants that are around our neighborhood that's what we are doing now okay so I, I i've seen uh, something on the wall over the feeding so it means you feed them two times in a day right yes do you manufacture your own feed where do you get them to buy or what's, what's the cost of feeding is it expensive the feed is expensive let me say it's expensive okay the feed is made in ghana mm -hmm. it's manufactured in ghana and it's sold as a shaman that's where you buy our feed from and the feed too we have sizes okay we don't just give any size to any fish okay so are you are you able to tell us the sizes and possibly the cost 
So the feet, we have from uh, 3.5 mm, that's millimeters. And we have 4.5 mm. And we have 6.0 mm. The 6.0 is for the big ones. The big ones are the other side. Okay. That's the point A. Mm. And the smaller ones or the medium size, they are here, point B. Okay. So we fill this ones, the point A, with a 6 mm. And we fill this ones with a 4 mm. Okay, so the one you're having now is the 4 mm. Yeah, okay. the 4 mm. So it means you can't give it to the big ones? I can't give it to the big ones. Why? Because when they are big, they don't need much, uh, much protein. Oh. But when they are small, they need much protein to become very big. Hmm. So the feed is full of proteins. Yeah, the feed has high percentage of protein. Hmm. It's, okay. it's, it's from. Um, it ranges from the size you buy. If it's, it's if it's small in size, it has much proteins. But if it's big in size, it has less protein in it. Oh, okay. So the you said this one they take what what mm? six mm the six mm. The bag of the 6, 6 mm, how much is it? And the bag of the 4 mm, how much does it cost? The bag one costs around 250 to 300 cities. That, that's the 4 mm and the 6 mm? Yeah, all the same price. Okay. And if you buy one bag, what's the size of the bag? At first, it was 20 kg, but it was reduced to 15 kg. Hey. <laughs> It was reduced to 15 kg. Yeah. Did the price also reduce? The price somehow reduced, but it's still the same. Oh. Because the person who will bring it to your place will also take something. Mm. So if you buy either the 20 or 15 kg bag, how long does it take before it's finished? At first, it used to take a month. Mm. But for now, because they are growing very fast, mm. it, it doesn't get to months. Okay. It even gets finished before the fourth week okay so we can say averagely you spe you use about one and a half bag yeah. of feed to yeah. feed them that's over 400 pieces of yes. the catfish but normally sometimes we don't only use the feed we okay. feed them with other vegetables such or as, other leaves such as propolis we feed them with propolis that one, did you buy it or you easily get it? That one, we easily get it. There is a garden just close to this area. Mm. It's around Polo Park. So for free? Just, yeah, for free. For leaves, for free. Okay, so you augment the feed with the purple leaf? No, when it's time for them to give them the purple leaves. Mm. You see that we give them the feed, we feed them this one. We feed them in the morning. Or we use this one in the evening. Mm. Or we use the purple leaves in the morning or we use this one in the afternoon. Okay. So if somebody is interested in starting this business using a small space like what you have here, what would you tell that person? Now, you don't need any big space to start farming. Because even in the, in the Europe, in Europe, people in story buildings, use the whole building for farming okay to plant tomatoes and other things so if you have a small space in your backyard don't be thinking it will be too small to start something you can just start even if it's in a poly tank that you want to start you can mm -hmm. start okay so there you have it elisha telling you that if you have a small space take advantage of it the agriculture and the agriculture sector has a lot of opportunities you don't need to say i should have a, an acre of land before i start something he started it on a rooftop together with his uncle and we are inspired sharing this with you this should motivate you to also start something using your small space around you whether for a garden or any other thing and it's a buy from us join us on social media tiktok facebook instagram for interactions on some of these things that we share with you if you need to contact Elisha on where he got his equipment before starting, you can always reach out to me and I will link you. It's a bye.